Good morning, happy Easter. The uh, lilies are on the altar in honor and memory of loved ones. If you place the lily there um, and you want it today, just meet me in the sanctuary after church. Otherwise, we'll leave them as they are to celebrate God's blessings for the next service and for next Sunday. And if you haven't already, RSVP for the women's luncheon, which is on Friday, April the 19th. Please let me know as soon as possible. There's invitations all around the church if you haven't gotten one. Um, there are 10 spots left out of 56, so we are very excited to have anyone join us. Thanks. <laughs>
perfect. This is the gospel of the Lord. He does for us. 
he takes on all the color and excitement of life and then we have that joy that we have in Jesus Christ and we can share that with others. So let's have a little prayer together. You can put it back in here. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate that. So we want to live a life that shows Jesus in all the bright colors of happiness and joy and forgiveness and brings our families together and uh, we get to share love with each other. So let's pray and thank God that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us and then to rise from the dead that we can go to heaven. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're thankful for this time together. We're thankful that you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior and our Lord. We're thankful that he rose from the dead we are to live with you for eternity. Help us to share that joy and excitement with uh, our friends and neighbors. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, now you're going to get a uh, little bag here, each of you. And then we'll get some uh, in the back. Thanks to Pastor Mike. We're so glad Pastor Mike is here. And he is, in fact, he's a uh, authorized getting these bags for everybody so we're excited and so after church there's going to be a, a super Easter egg hunt. oh uh, we do have some extra bags for uh, with some really cool things for the kids so if you have a, a, a child that's not here a grandkid uh, after church just meet me up here and we'll get you a, a Easter bag
Uh, for those of you that don't know, I was in the Navy, uh, Navy and Marine Corps as a chaplain for, for four tours, and uh, I'm a reservist now. Uh, I served with a chaplain uh, named John, uh, Lutheran guy, Lutheran through and through. Um, good dude, he's an old rugby player, we played rugby together, and then afterwards kind of hobbled off like this, and uh, cause we were both, uh, I was in my 40s, and he was in his 50s. Um, and just Lutheran, we all we had all the Lutheran, like the Sven and Ollie jokes, if you remember the Sven and Ollie jokes, yeah, back in the day. Um, and his wife Shirley was super cool. She would uh, she would bake uh, the communion bread, and so afterwards we would just you know get a little don't don't tell the Lutheran church this, but we had a little butter afterwards, and we just chow down, and that was pretty awesome. Because in Japan, you know, you can't get that real American bread. Unless it's been frozen and sent to the commissary for Jackie. Um, and he retired uh, about 10 years ago. And he lives on a farm in, uh, in Washington State. And he has, you know the cows with the long hair? What are they called? Hot, are they highland? Is that right? I think they're highland cows. But they're not production animals. They're just big pets. <laughs> like, that's how cool this guy is. Um, and so one year, uh, years ago, he was giving his Easter sermon. And when the music stopped, he walked up to the pulpit and he said, he is risen. And then he sat back down. And the congregation was like, all right, is that it? What are you doing here? And he sat down and he was looking straight ahead as though he had preached for an hour. And, you know, the organist was like, all right. And uh, the organist was Japanese. She's like, I guess there's some new Easter thing. I'm just starting to like it. So he was committed to that bit. I mean, he was committed to it that, like, that's the message. He is risen. Um, I don't think I can pull that one off today. <laughs> Although maybe you know, a few minutes in, you're like, oh, come on, and we want to go, go watch basketball. What's going on? But I don't think I could pull that off. But, but like Chapel John, uh, one thing that I could say with 100% certainty is he is risen. Was anybody ever a cheerleader? Anybody? Ah, Carol. Carol was a cheerleader. Yeah. I was a little bit old football player. So uh, while you were you know, doing your thing, I was in the locker room. Um, but I remember cheerleaders doing a call and response. So we're going to do one now. Okay? When I say he is risen, you say hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Okay, so why, why, why are we so enthusiastic about Easter? The resurrection of our Lord is the essence of our faith. It's in our DNA. It's who we are. It's what makes us Christian. You know, in our, our messed up world, for one day at least, everything is good. You know, the, remember dressing in your itchy church clothes and going... And we, we got we got some kids here today, um, you know, finding eggs and getting candy and all that great stuff from your kids. Um, and even though when the weather is bad, which it was this morning, I was struggling there for a minute, but it ended up being okay. But even when the weather's bad, life is good, and that's a rarity here. And said, by the way, I apologize for bringing all this rain and stuff to San Diego. My bad, my bad. I tell you, as soon as I got here. I Start um, today's a day, it's a day of celebration where we reaffirm our faith in the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord. It's a day we are called to heed, heed the words of our Savior who spoke to the disciples. It's a day we recognize that Jesus rose from the dead in accordance with the scriptures. It's a day we renew re-energize and charge forward in faith. It's not a parable. It's real. It's God's love. Okay, so those of you that have heard me the last couple of weeks know that I love things in threes. I love them. Boom, in threes. So, God's love demonstrated by Jesus' 
Jesus' resurrection is the ultimate reassurance. And regarding these reassur this reassurance, I'm going to give you three things that we're going to focus on today. One, the resurrection is reassurance that his sacrifice is sufficient to conquer sin and death. Two, the resurrection is reassurance that this life we're leading now does have significance. And three, the resurrection is reassurance that Jesus fulfills his promises. Those three things. His sacrifice conquers sin and death. Our lives are significant now. And Jesus keeps his promises. Okay, regard, regarding uh, conquering sin and death, that's the whole thing. That's exactly what was intended. That's what Jesus knew was going to happen. And that's what happened. Our sin was atoned for by Christ on the cross. Done deal. He conquered death through his resurrection. Done deal. All we have to do is believe. We have to believe that this happened. We have to believe that it continues to have that, that core importance in our faith. All we have to do is believe. Have faith. We're good to go. Words you'd love to hear in the military. You're good to go. Outstanding. See you Monday. You're good to go. Now, oftentimes we don't see it. It's not abundantly clear in our daily lives. Um, in our epistle today, you see Paul kind of doing a sales pitch. You know that elevator pitch? We all have to do an elevator pitch, right, at some point in our life. Um, he tells uh, the witnesses who interacted, of the many witnesses who interacted with Jesus after he rose from the dead. And in Corinth, they were facing doubts. So Paul had to go in and really say, no, this really happened in accordance with the scriptures. He is the Messiah. And it, it, it was, for Paul, it was paramount to the growth of our faith. Because you know, he wanted our faith to grow as God wanted it. Um, and early church witnesses often died for it. If you ever read, you know, if, if you study the book of Acts, and I'm from Michigan, I say it like Acts, like there's something chopped a tree down there, it's A-C-T-S. Um, and then you study what happened, you know, to... The, the disciples. It wasn't pretty. Uh, the Romans didn't mess around. And we know from Scripture, the Romans did not mess around. And carrying forward, um, the resurrection can be a difficult pill to swallow. Being ra raised from the dead is not a natural order of things. Um, our scientific minds just struggle with it. And doubts definitely exist in the ancient Near East. Um, you think about it, you know, in the context of the Greek philosophers, the Romans, the Greeks, um, they, they ultimately tried to explain the, word, the, the world through reason. Not through God's word, but through reason, through human word. It's lowercase w word versus uppercase w word. And for, for that reason, a lot of people just dismissed it. They didn't believe it was a real and significant event. And even Mary Magdalene, as we read in, in our gospel, thought Jesus was a gardener for crying out loud. You know, it's just difficult to comprehend. And, and I know, you know, hindsight's 2020, we look back, ah, oh, the disciples were knuckleheads. What were they thinking? They knew it was coming. But if something like that happened now, would you believe it? Like not knowing what we know now over the last 2,000 years. Yeah, you probably struggle with it, right? You're like, oh. you know, how, how much do we struggle with the UFO thing? Yeah. It's like, do you believe that? I don't know. There's even people who still believe the world is flat. You know, so yeah, as humans, we struggle to believe what we cannot see and touch and understand. So when we look at Jesus' ministry before the crucifixion, we can say 
followers didn't really get it. They didn't really see him. They didn't really see what was going on. Um, he was there, and they were cool with it, and they were happy with it, but they didn't really get it. And he regularly told them, Jesus is really cool in, the, in, the, the, in all the New Testament, all the, the, the synoptic and the gospel, synoptic gospels and gospel of John, and telling us exactly what's up. Every, very truly I tell you, yeah, and then you know something's coming there, right? Or he'll just complain, you know, just say it. He says what's going on. He said he would be handed over to the ruling authorities in Jerusalem, the, the Romans, to suffer, die, and then rise from the dead. That's the Messiah. And his followers did believe that he was the Christ. He was the Messiah. They believed it because they were there. You know, actions speak louder than words. But they didn't quite get it. And we see it you know, in Scripture that, that, that they just didn't fathom that it was actually going to happen. So they, they, they found Jesus. And then they had to take that next step, which was to really, in your heart, believe what was going to happen. And, you know, it's human nature. Um, we search for Jesus now. If anybody, anybody ever go on the internet, on apps, on everything, it's, it's not pretty, is it? You know, there's not people saying, hey, everything is awesome today. Hey, thanks for, thanks for scrolling. You know, no, it's not that. It's, it's rough. It's rough. And... When I found in the military, because the military is just a huge mishmash of everybody from all over the U.S., U.S. territories, from all over the place, um, most of whom, 65%, I believe, is the latest number, uh, have no faith tradition at all. So when Marines and sailors would come to me and say, "Chaps, what's going on with all this? Can, can, can you do that?" Of course, they always want to start with Revelation. That's where they, they love that. You know, they want to start with that. Because it's like really, you know, ah, uh, you know, monsters and stuff. But they understood that something was wrong, and that they needed help, that there was an emptiness, there was a brokenness. And in the world that they see, and that we all see online, like like sin seems to be winning, like the sinful condition seems to be winning. A lot of really you always like, like the old phrase goes, a lot of times really good things happen to really bad people. But the problem is when we recognize that we need that, that we need to, you know, to believe and to put our, our all of our brokenness on that cross and then to, to, to join Jesus in his resurrection, to conquer sin and death. We, we have to suspend our, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to phrase this delicately, we have to suspend our intellect a little bit. Because scientists, um, rational thinkers, all of humanity, we have this thing where like, we're the top of the food chain. We know everything. We can rationalize everything. You know, we solve problems. Human beings, as and, you know, as beings, are problem solvers. So when we when we break something or something's broken, what do we want to do? We want to go right to the fix. And a lot of times, when people come into my office, Marines and sailors. All right, chaps, I got this, 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 and this going on. Give me a plan to fix it. There you go. And I'd be like, okay, it's a little more difficult than that. Or I think I want to be a Christian. How do I do that? Okay. Let's, let's start with Matthew. Nah, I'd rather start with Revelation. <laughs> Get there. Um, but when we try to fix the world, when we try to fix a condition um, without acknowledging that we ourselves need some work, it only makes things worse. So, is it really any wonder that the world needs Jesus' salvific grace? And 
many oft times the world, even church bodies, they just don't see it. They just don't get it. But during Holy Week, here and now, because you're here, you see it. You get it. And you can live it the whole rest of the year. We see, we see victory over sin. We see conquering death. We see grace. We see love. We see that we have eternal life. Number two, I promise you that the next two are not as long as the first time. I promise you. If you need to stretch, stretch. Yeah. The resurrection is also reassurance that the life we're leading is significant. Yes, we have eternal life as we believe. And God's forgiveness comforts us through Jesus' reversal of death and decay. He, he, was, he is risen. He beat death and decay. He beat the human condition. And the resurrection motivates us to, in quotes, resurrect our little corner of the world through faith and action, doing our best to alleviate suffering in the world through word and deed, all in Jesus' resurrected name. We are united to him by faith. We are to live as risen people. Jesus took our nasty stuff, all of our sin, our brokenness, all of our all that garbage, took it onto himself and onto that cross. And the resurrection on that third day proves he can overcome. He overcame sin, he overcame deterioration. He overcame the weight of the world so we can have eternal life. So in this life that we're living right now, Jesus assures us that as believers we're saved. Relief. We can go forth and do good things in this world as saved beings because the world beyond this life right here, again, it's good to go. We're not earning points. I always joke with some of my Navy, Marine Corps, college, chapel college. There's not some giant scoreboard in the sky. We don't need to earn anything. We are just charged to live that life that Jesus earned for us. But it's not cheap grace. It's not cheap grace. This life does matter. We have a charge to be faithful, good, and kind in this life. This life is significant. He took our punishment. He rose again. He is eternal life. He is God's love. Third thing, Jesus keeps his promises. He fulfilled the scriptural, scriptural promises of the Messiah. He kept his promise with that glorious victory on the cross. He certified that promise and he declared victory over sin and inherent human evil. He rose from the dead, the victory over death, the ultimate promise kept. This is a promise we can believe. For Christ is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
songs of returning birds and fields soon to be planted, we give you praise for an even greater sign of new life, the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that we especially celebrate at this time. The sadness and despair of his death have given way to the bright promise of immortality, for the resurrection is our guarantee that justice will tri triumph over treason, light will overcome darkness, and love will conquer death. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, it saddens our hearts to see the great suffering of your beloved children in the world. We pray for all your children locally and around the world, impacted by war, poverty, extreme weather, food insecurity, and homelessness. We pray for those who suffer physically with illness or mentally with depression or anxiety. We pray for those who are unaware of your great love, mercy, and grace. Lord, come breathe on these people by your Holy Spirit and bring great love, hope, and joy through us, your church. Help us to minister to others in the strength of your spirit and to work in unity together. May we shine your glorious light into the darkness and remain steadfast and true to you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, it disturbs us when we see world leaders embracing division instead of unity, pursuing wealth instead of justice, and concealing lies instead of speaking the truth. We lift all those in significant leadership to you. Come guide their thoughts, cover their actions, and renew their minds. Protect them from the influence of the realms of darkness and sweep away any corruption. We pray that you would lay out new paths of righteousness in troubled nations and lands. Lord, in your mercy. As we celebrate, we also dare to ask for your grace so that we may live the promise given to us by imitating the life of Jesus and reaching out to the poor, marginalized, and the least among us. Come bring miracles of provision, healing, and restoration. Speak into our lives and our hearts so that we might be messengers of Easter joy and hope. We make these prayers through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Go to page 9. Now let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation.
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this.
well before communion, so uh, I think it's a bad look if you get sick from uh, Easter communion. And now uh, we send you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen.